And the first speaker is the Dr. Chen Haowei. He is the excellent work winner. He from Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital. And the topic is a presentation about the mediator of the effect of gender on urea acid nephrolysiasis, a number of percussion of structural equation modeling. Please, Dr. Chen. Okay, thank you for moderator introduction. Dear professor and doctors, today in the following four minutes, I will show you our finding of mediator of the effect of gender on urea acid stone, which have been published in Sangye report in 2017. We use the new staircase method called Structure Equation Modeling, SEM, for this paper. As we know, previous paper showed the male to female ratio is 3 to 1 in urea acid stone formation. However, no study have investigated the reason for the gender related difference in the development of urea acid stone. When we analyze our large stone bank data, in southern of Taiwan. Our data is similar. The male to female ratio in urea acid stone is about 3 to 1, it's similar. But when we're using the logistic regression to analyze the market flow factor to impact the development of urea acid stone, we found there were no significant effect of gender on urea acid stone formation. So in clinical practice, we found more male patients have urea acid stone. But how about there were no significant effect of gender on urea acid stone development when addressing other factors? It's very interesting. In fact, there was some complicated and challenging for analyzing the gender effect on urea acid stone development using the traditional staircase method, including first, several different factors can affect its development such as diabetes meters, growth, obesity, low urine pH, and so on. Secondly, the cascade of different factors that have indirect and direct factors on urea acid stone formation, like diabetes meters in direct form urea acid nephrogenesis, by lowering the urea pH. Thirdly, factors that form urea acid stone are also interrelated. So, if, so we propose the concept of using mediator and confounder in the analysis of urea acid stone. Please see this figure. When using traditional regression staircase method, we only found M, this M factor is significant factor, but the key and G would be mask. Such a complicated problem is gimmicked by using traditional staircase method for analysis. Currently, Several non-medical journals, such as this figure is from the paper of Traveling Science, have recently used structural equation modeling, SEM, as a staircase method to analyze the relationship between different factors. Using SEM is an advantage because it can establish a best fitting model for informed theory and measurement. Simultaneous is then different mediating and compounding factors like this is compounding factor, and this too is a mediating factor, and it can test the pathway, and adjust the measurement error and measure interaction between variables. In 2016, a paper about internal medicine using SEN was published. We can see they use SEN to analyze the pathway of metabolic syndrome. So we use we hereby use SEN to test our hypothesis that there are different clinical, social, and behavior factors that mediate the relationship between male and female patients with stone and the leg development of urea stone. When using SEN in our model, first, in fact, we found a very complex relationship between every factor, and we use SEN to examine and test the every pathway. Okay, let's see our SEN result. Of the 1,098 patients, this is our character. And using SEN, the final best VK model was contrast for urea acid stone formation. And please see this figure. Each pathway is stack is called significant pathway. And the number next to uh, each arrow, the negative number, it means a negative effect, and the positive number is mean the positive effect. So the last, we 
find nine significant pathways of Eurasia stone formation. And we and we didn't demonstrate the gender had direct effect on Eurasia stone formation, but it had indirect effect. The mediator including gold, urine pH, and the renal function. So our conclusion is that difference between male and female patient in their development of urea acid formation. But we so we suggest severe treatment for impaired renal function, low urine pH, gout in male patient with urea acid stone, especially. This is the end of my presentation. I'm Chen Hao Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen Hao Wei, and congratulations for your winning. Because of time and limitation, we will proceed to another, another presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next winner of the excellent work is Dr. Li Xiangyin from Kaohsiung Dadong Hospital. And his presentation is about the um, one one is pro over expression in the case poor prognosis in urethral carcinoma of the urinary bladder and the upper urinary tract. Please, Dr. Li. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Chairman. It's my honor to uh, share our uh, my experiment about the UTUC, and uh, we found the softest one over expression in the case poor prognosis in UC. As we know, UTUC have special features in Taiwan compared to Western society. We have higher incidence, and the ratio is different from uh, Western society. And so we work on the UTUC. HSPG has a crucial, is a crucial element of ECM. It, it will play an um, important role in various biological process and the organ system. And the human surfaces one control the surfactation status of HSPG. So it will be shut down or re up regulation in various malignancy. So we uh, perform data mining from GEO. These two GSE uh, database is from GEO, or both are blood cancer uh, database. And uh, they show high expression of SAF1 uh, significantly the determined worst per patient survival rate. And from our study about the, we, we, we want to see the sub one transcript and the protein exp expression. We found it will increase in higher stage. From the IHC stating, also showed, also showed that high grade and the high stage usage showed bright sub one immunoreactivity. And from our cohort study specimen, also found the sub one uh, expression have uh, associate, is associated with the TNM stage. And then from our uh, st uh, uh, KM curve also found the high expression of SAF1 predict worse uh, disease-free and metastasis-free survival. And we, uh, we, do, we use these uh, cell cultures to identify which two are high expression of SAF1. So we do the knockdown, knockdown experiment we found depletion of sub-1 in cell migration and the invasion. Not only, not only the uh, knockdown exper experiment, we also performed gain of function experiment. We, we took the uh, BFTC 909. This cell line is uh, special to our, our, uh, our country. And we found that significant Increased phosphorylated AKT can be seen after de detection in sub one. This group, if after we add in the wild type sub one group, we can see the phosphorylation will increase, and also we can see it will promote cell progression. And then from the experiments of migration and the invasion experiments, also we will found uh, sub one wild type also will increase cancer cell migration and the evasion. So my conclusion is increased sub one expression is significant predict the more uh, advanced tumor stage and uh, with poor metastasis, free survival and disease survival. So from both knockdown and the over expression experiment, we can maybe we can predict the oncologic role of sub one in UC. Uh, this is the end of my 
speech. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, and uh, congratulations, Dr. Li Xiangyin. Any question from the floor? Yeah, please. Uh, thank you very much for wonderful work. You know, the sulfur seems to be very new biomarker in any type of cancer. Yeah. Different role. Some were up regulation. Some were down regulation. Yeah. From a uh, UC is a poor, poor result. Yeah. yeah. And also, this is specific for Taiwanese people, or is, you know, you you find this mutation or expression in Taiwanese population, or general UTUC. Oh. You, you did that use the database, right? Yeah, so, database yeah. one is from the other country. Oh, okay, all over the world. Okay, yeah, all over the, yeah. yes, yes. Dr. Lin. Yeah, the third, okay, the next presentation is the third winner prize, Dr. Huang Yunqin. He's uh, now the chief of the Jiayi Chang'an Hospital. And his presentation is about the preoperative complication and mortality in patient with Urethral carcinoma and end stage renal disease undergoing one stage complete urine check interpretation. Dr. Wang, please. Okay, it's my great honor to be here. Today I will present our study. As we know, one stage complete urine check is for pa pa patient was we doing the bilateral neighbor uterectomy and the systemic at the same time. We also know the procedure offer better chance to prevent recurrence and the cancer specific mortality. So, but we also know the procedure have the significant risk of post operative complication. According to the report from the O and the, the Yosem Porch, the mortality rate was from the 12% to the to the 50%. So we, our study was was want to evaluate the association between the preoperative clinical characteristic and the postoperative complication. Our measure was we collect the patient from the 2004 to 2015. The indication for the one stage acute procedure was used in the patient with CSRD and the functional functional renal graphy of the synchrome make uh, bilateral UTUC and the bilateral UC. We define the major complication was the the, the complication more than grade three and the the result we correct the totally we correct eighty one per eighty one case and the, as we know the between the two group group the age and the, the chosen score was significant between the two group the major complication group have the all age and the higher child scope, the gender and the BMI and the abdomen surgery history and the end stage renal disease and the renal replacement therapy and the dialysis duration was no significant difference and the preoperative operative level and the surgery volume was significant difference and we also know the hospitalization days are was longer in the major complication group. We find the most common major complication was AV shunt dysfunction. And the, in the univariate uh, evaluation, we find the advanced advantage age and the, the albumin level was significant difference. However, in the multivariate evaluation, only the chosen scope and the surgeon modern was a significant difference. So our conclusion is acute is a highly complicated procedure with a significant for major post-operative complication. And the, the higher chosen scope is associated increase the post-operative complication. Search environment is inverted related to the operative complication. Thank you for, for your attention. Thank you and congratulations, Dr. Huang. Any question from the floor? Okay, due to time limitation, we'll proceed to another speaker. The, the next speaker is Professor Ran Yong Sun, come from Kaohsiung Medical, Kaohsiung Medical University, and uh, his topic is EG. EGCG elevated bladder overactivity in a ray model with metabolic syndrome 
and offering hormone deficiency through, through mitochondrial apoptosis pathway. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. It's my great honor to be here for the Chinbei Medical Foundation Paper Award. And uh, here present my recent research is about the EGCG alleviated spread of activity in the red model with metabolic syndrome and over hormone deficiency through mitochondrial apoptosis pathway. We know the metabolic syndrome was highly prevalent in patients with OAB. So when compared to OAB patients with the controls, they have larger waist circumferences and greater body mass index and a low HDL level and a higher incident hypertension. In the meanwhile, the metabolic syndrome also highly prevalent than in the postmenopausal women. As a result of ovary hormone deficiency and age-related changes, postmenopausal women are suspected to many urinary dysfunction, such as OAB symptoms, straight urine incontinence, and recurrent UTI. EGC is in the X-ray from the green key, and it's well known has some has strong anti-oxidative and anti-inflammatory properties. EGCG has been proposed to enhance the activity of natural anti oxidant enzyme, such as super oxidant dismutase, SOD, and the catalyst. So the major, the major aim of the present study is to evade the effect of EGCG on the metabolic syndrome and the overhome depression the deficiency induced OAB. So here's our study design. We divide the SD rate into five groups. And the first is the control groups. And the second one is the we feed with high fat, high sugar diet, and third one, which also in addition to the high-fat, high-sugar diet, we do the bilateral ovary surgery to mimic the menopause. And the first one is what bilateral ovaryotomy and the high-fat, high-sugar diet, and also treat with EGCG from intrapatonic ingestion daily. And the fifth one is the high-fat, high-sugar diet and the EGC treatment. After six months treated, we do the CMG and the metabolic cage study to evade the body pattern then sequence the braid and then take the braid out for the Western protein, immunosystem chemistry, and the tunnel assay. So here's our result. We can see after six months of the high fat high sugar diet and the with or without ovaryotomy, the braid um, nitrate frequency increased. So the this red debate OAB symptoms and the treat with EGCG decreased the volume frequency. And these are parameters of the urine parameter, serum parameter, and the urine parameters. We can see this red. The TG and the cholesterol increased in high fat high sugar diet group, and is that in the OBS group, and it recovered to almost control level after the EGG treatment. The same from the glucose level. So this red do develop metabolic syndrome after high fat high sugar diet feeding. So if this is the Western protein result. We check the M2 and M3 muscular receptor and the P2S3 pulmonary receptors. We can see the high fat, high sugar metabolic syndrome with the result of writing surgery. This muscular receptor and pulmonary receptor increase, but EGCG decreased this muscular receptor and the pulmonary receptor. For the profibrosis marker and the industrial fibrosis marker, the metabolic syndrome with the result of ovaryotomy increased significantly, especially the courage one expression is overexpressed. For the EG3 treatment, decreased the industrial fibrosis and the pro inflammatory factor, TGF beta. For the assay stress marker, DMP and natural tyrosine, the same. The metabolic syndrome with the result of ovaryotomy increased significantly, but decreased after EGCG treatment. This is a tunnel assay. We can see the metabolic syndrome with the result of vitamin. The apoptosis cell increased in the urethral layer and the suburethral layer, but decreased to the almost to the control level after EGC treatment, especially in the mass with the EGC group. And here is the apoptosis related protein. We can see the apoptosis marker cytochrome C caspase 9, caspase 3 increased in metabolic syndrome with the withdrawal of vitamin but decreased after the EGG treatment. So this EG treatment can decrease apoptosis cells. So this is a proposed mechanism. The metabolic syndrome and the overall hormone deficiency can induce mitochondria to release cytochrome C and the activate caspase 9 and caspase 3 and the induce apoptosis pathway and the result in greater hyperactivity. And the EGCG treatment can decrease the ER 
pathway and the mitochondria pathway and the decreased mitochondria induced oxidative stress. So our conclusion is metabolic, syn metabolic syndrome and ovary hormone deficiency could enhance the generation of acidic stress, leading to significant greater apoptosis and industrial fibrosis. Oxidative stress, apoptosis, and mitochondrial dysfunction might be important factors underlying the brain overactivity. And that using the EGC treatment can alleviate the brain overactivity through attaining acidic stress and the apoptosis of brain and the diminished overexpression of mitochondria apoptosis signals. This paper was published on the report, 2018, March. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> have any questions from the front? I have a question. Do you have any recommend for daily practice? You, I think this is from green tea. So the, the daily use from the OAB patient or it is the antioxidant effect, so I think it's more important to reduce the oxidative stress in these OB patients. But for a daily, daily, this is the extract from the Sigma company, so this is not a pure green tea. Yeah, this is a chemical, yeah, so it's different from the daily, daily green tea consumption. Okay, okay. thank you. May any question? No, over. We next move. The Next speaker is Li Wei Jia from Kaohsiung Changgum Memory Hospital. His topic is Material Fructose Exposure Programs Metabolic Syndrome Associated Breath of Overactivity in Young Adult Offspring. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman and Co Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Li from Kaohsiung, and it's my pleasure to talk about my thesis in this. In in this uh, conference. My thesis is a maternal fructose exposure programming bladder dysfunction of adult male offspring injuries. So the question is about the uh, non-communicating diseases such as diabetes or cancer. So uh, part of the, the reason why men got the diseases of, is from the maternal uh, nutrition. So it's a, a big series about Doha theory. Okay. Uh, the study uh, design is simple. Yeah, we have a group of control, just control. Okay. The other is the maternal fructose exposure in lactation and the pregnancy periods. So it's uh, involved in the uh, investigation of forward investigation in genetics. It means we found the phenotype and uh, we uh, go to the gen genetic typing. It's so-called uh, forward investigation, not backward. It's the forward. Fa uh, we found a phenotype and uh, find a gene. Okay. So the result is also simple. We found a phenotype, uh, metabolic syndrome, and uh, insulin resistance, and uh, we have a uh, bladder overactivity in rats. So we do a uh, gene screening by next generation sequencing and uh, qPCR validation. And we do the protein assays and the functional assays, uh, majorly in uh, uh, CRC. Okay. So we come to our conclusion. Maternal high fructose exposure in gestation and lactation periods, programming the bladder dysfunction of male offspring. The male offspring may have characteristics of metabolic syndrome, urinary frequency, and the bladder overactivity at the three months of age. So we observed the significant alterations of gene expression in mRNA level of M2, M3, P2S1, VPR2, and the TRIP4. Significant bladder protein of regulation in M2, M3, and the P2S1 receptor, as well as decreased carbacol induced bladder contraction of maternal fructose exposure. So it's our concept to prove uh, the why the people got the uh, metabolic syndrome and the uh, overactive bladder. So, uh, thanks for your attention. You can check uh, the paper in detail in scientific reports. Thank you. Congratulations, Professor D. Have you any question? And uh, I wonder if you are interested in doing a comprehensive methylation <coughs> assay to see if, if there's any changes for methylation of uh, any genes. Uh, maturation, yes. We 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 uh, we 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 use the 
So we would, uh, our study method is to use the next generation gene se sequencing. We do the whole blood gene sequencing and uh, to find uh, which genes alteration in this model. So it's uh, very convenient to explore the situation. And uh, our result is here. So uh, this gene, uh, uh, candidate gene here, and uh, we uh, validate the uh, by qPCR. So we can find out which gene is significant. Also, we do the traditional functional assays, uh, carbacol, KCL, and uh, you know, ATP stimulation. So we, we found the uh, further overactivity and uh, the fun uh, functional functional results. And we also do the Western plus uh, M2, M3 is very important, and the P2S1, there's an uh, alteration here. Okay, say so we, we prove the concept of uh, why people got the uh, metabolic syndrome and the uh, over yeah. So my question is not the gene expression, the question is maturation alteration. So promoter lesion of some genes, you know, some maturated status. Maturation status. Yeah, could be changed by Dohart. Okay. Yeah. Maturation status is evaluation by the metabolic cage and the cytometry. So. No, no, no. Maturation is a gene maturation. Maturation actually. Oh, methylation. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a very. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a comprehensive uh, methylation uh, examination. Oh, methylation. Uh, uh, this is uh, a so called epigenetic regulation here, yeah, yes. And it may be the methylation or estylation or some, something there. But we now study this on the estylation. Uh, methylation is too difficult for me to do. And I have some evidence to show why the, the, the brain can get metabolic syndrome and the blood of activity. Uh, currently, my crew is from the adipose tissue and uh, some, you know, the vessel impairment. But it's really a big, uh, big issue. And uh, currently, we will uh, go on the, the new project involved in the microbiota. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, we're seeing that some you know, crews is from the microbiota and they induce some uh, metabolite. Um, yeah, yeah, but metabolomics to infect the blood directly. So it's a very big series, but this is our preliminary data. Thank you so much. Okay. Because the time is the limit, I will close this section. Thank you, everybody.